Look at that! We're actually in a real fire station. And there's so many trucks! Woo! It's awesome! Okay, let's go and discover them all. So, this, according to my friend Nick, is a truck that is used when houses collapse. It comes here to reinforce the structure and find people who are stuck under the rubble. Ooh. Ooh. Now, this one is huge. This is a ladder truck or an aerial truck. And this one has a 30 meter long ladder, which is used to save people. Or in apartments, you know, high up in a flat or, you know, people in high places. Wow, it's huge and also strong. Whee! <laughs> Still at the fire station, hi Nick. So, this truck here is in case of air pollution or water pollution, like diesel in the water. Whereas this one is more for factory explosion. So more products, more heavy machinery. Wow! Now this one is for road accidents. So on it, there's all the cutters and pliers and stuff needed in order to free people from a trashed and crumpled car. And look, it's charging. That's because you need to keep all that equipment charged up in case of an emergency, of course. Oh, and what's this one over there? <laughs> and of course, you need a boat because sometimes people will have problems on a lake or in a river or even in the sea. And so you need a team ready to get in the boat and Hop to the rescue! Let's go! Ooh, it's rolling. Now, this truck and the one right here is all about burning houses. If something in town burns... Oh! Morning, morning. There's an emergency! Ooh, something went down. So, you see, now there's actually an intervention. There's a problem. So they are hopping in the van and they are whoosh! Going to save someone's life and make this world better, a bit at a time. Bye, guys! Ah, they're the best, I really like them. Isn't that awesome? Now, you just saw an ambulance just leaving and going on an intervention. The ambulance is the most used truck. More than 80% of the time they are called on site because, let's face it, this one is what we really need most of the time. But what is in this truck which makes it so useful? Well, that's simple. It's like a miniature hospital. Okay? Isn't that great? And to help me learn everything about this truck, there's Emily here to help me. Hello, Emily. Now, Emily is a volunteer firefighter. That means she's not a professional. She's here in her free time to help out. That's awesome. Props to you. And also to help us, there's Justin. Hello, Justin. Hi, Kitty. So, Justin is 13 years old. She's learning how to be a firefighter. So, on regular weekdays, she goes to school, to junior high school, and during the weekends, she learns how to save lives. And that's awesome. Props to you too. That's great! And now, the most important piece of equipment in this truck. The stretcher! This is what you use to go get people who aren't conscious anymore most of the time. Okay, girls, how do we get this out? Show us! Now, the thing is, firefighter girls are awesome too. They do as much work as the men. So, it kind of rolls out in the first part, you know, just like a sled in a way. Ooh. And then the wheels come down! which is really important because, you know, otherwise it will fall down, which isn't great. And now it's my turn. I play the victim. I'm not dead, I'm just unconscious. So, you know, it can happen for many reasons. You know what, I'm really happy to be on a stretcher because I've always wanted to do so. But the thing is, usually it's not a good sign for you to be on a stretcher. Oh, look, I have gloves. I feel so cared for. Wow. I feel important. 
I'm at the center of attention again. And now, back in the truck. Okay, so how does it go from here? I can't see anything. <laughs> My back is... <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, so I am being loaded in the truck. Okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Whew. And okay, I'm secured. Well, now that I'm all strapped down and everything is great, we're ready to go to the hospital. Great. Let's go. Thank you, girls. You were great. Firefighters wear special shiny helmets. It helps you tell them apart from police or ambulance workers. Firefighters don't wear helmets to look nice, no, 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 no. The helmet is very important to keep firefighters safe. It protects them from things that could hurt them like heat or falling objects. Ooh. The helmet also has a special mask to help them breathe when there's smoke or chemicals in the air. Firefighters' helmets have changed a lot over time. They've been made from leather, metal and even plastic. The most famous firefighter helmet is called the F1 and it's really high-tech. Firefighters take good care of their helmets and never eat with it on or put them in strange places. If you see a dangerous situation, you can help by calling emergency services. In case of an emergency, you need to call the 112. That's 112. Call them if you have any doubt on anything. If you need help, if someone is hurt, or something like that, do not hesitate. A life might be at stake. The 112 is a dispatch center. That means, depending on what you need and what you say, they will call or contact different fire stations or stuff like that and contact the police and firefighters to send them to you, okay? And this is the control station. That means Alex here is telling his mates to say, hey, we have a fire, this place, go use this truck. Guys, assembly. And that's it, the team is regrouping and they're going. There, my little brainiacs, you remember Justin, she was just with us in the ambulance. Now, this is what Justin needs to wear as a young apprentice firefighter. She has some big boots which are reinforced and then she has a onesie. Boys and girls in a onesie at all time. And there's also a belt, a big heavy belt and of course the helmet. It's always important to have a helmet in order to protect your head. After all, that's where your brain is. Thanks, Justin, you were great. Woo! See you later. Woo! But what does a firefighter need in order to fight fire? Well, for that, we have Alex to help us. Hi, Alex. Hi, Kitty. So, how are you? Okay, so, first, the gear. We need pants and we need a vest because, see, he's in his regular, you know, the uniform a firefighter needs to wear at all times. But he doesn't wear that when he needs to fight fire. So, What's there? So we have a fire resistant vest and also fire resistant pants as well as very strong boots with a reinforced heel, uh, not heel, tip. Because of course, when you want to save people, you can't run the risk of harming yourself. Otherwise, you're not helping anyone and you're actually putting yourself in danger. So you need as much equipment to make sure you are safe. Wow. He changed really fast. <laughs> I did not expect that. And of course, the most important part, he looks really buff with his vest. <laughs> Damn, he was buff before, but now he's even stronger. And of course, you need something to protect your head. 
And of course, the most important piece of equipment, the helmet. You can't go save someone with your bare head. You need a helmet to protect it and to protect your face from the heat. And of course, a visor, because you know, there's gonna be ashes, there's gonna be cinder flying everywhere. And you need that to protect your eyes in order to see better and in order to save people. Oh, well, good job. And he did all that in about a minute and a half. That's really fast. Thanks, Alex, because that's great. Have a lovely day. Hey guys, it's lunchtime. <laughs>The thing is, you need to eat healthy in order to be strong. As you've seen, they need to work out a lot and they need to spend a lot of energy. And uh, I really want that steak. It's my... Uh, he's scary with his knife. <laughs> and of course, there's a cafeteria so that they can all eat together. A bon appetit, my friends. Firefighters have a new workplace, the forest. Have you heard of global warming and droughts? When the weather is very, very hot, dry giant fires can break out in the forest. <gasps> Trees can burn faster than houses and firefighters must work very, very hard to put them out. Fire can be quick or fire can be slow. Did you know that fire can burn four times quicker when it's going uphill? Firefighters pour lots of water on the fire to cool it down. Then they make sure the fire can't spread any further or start again by using lots of different tools. Rain will put the fire out, but until that happens, the firefighters must stay on guard because the soil can still be burning under the ground. You can help firefighters by calling an emergency number if you see a flame burning near trees. Hey there, my little brainiacs! So you know what? Since I was a kid, I always dreamed about being a firefighter myself. However, you know, I don't have the muscle mass. But if there's one thing you need to learn, the first thing you need to learn if you want to be a firefighter is how to unravel a hose and you know, to bring out the fire hose. So let's do that right now. We have my friend here, Arnold. Hi Arnold, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Okay, so Arnold is gonna help me because he actually knows how to do this type of stuff and I don't. So let's go. First of all, you take the hose and you throw it down. A bit like bowling in a way. And then you need to hook it up to the muzzle, which is, you know, where the water comes out, the power, the pressure, where you actually fight the fire. Of course, you need to hook up the hose to the fire hydrant. This is usually put in every city so as to have easy access to water for firefighters. So this is like a uh, jacked up water gun. I'm a firefighter and I have power. Well, this is way too much power. How do you do this all day? Whoa. Well, now that we've unraveled the hose, I've been spraying like, you know, a complete idiot. But I am kind of tired, but that's because there is a technique to actually hold one of those. So, what is the technique? Please show us. Right hand, if you're right-handed, under, you wedge it right between your arm and your body, and then, well... Ah! Hey 
there! It's time for the Kitty Quiz! Today we're gonna have three questions all about the world of firefighters. So are you ready? Great! First question. What is the firefighter's key equipment and piece of clothing? Is it A, clean underwear, or B, a helmet? Timer. Ah, time's up. So, let's hear your answer. That's right. The key equipment for firefighters is the helmet. Congratulations. The helmet. H E L M E and T. Okay. Second question. What helps a firefighter reach high places? Is it A, a supersonic jet? Or B, a ladder? Timer. Okay, time's up. Let's hear your answer. That's right. The piece of equipment that helps Firefighters reach high points is a ladder with a platform. Congratulations! Ladder. L A D D E R. Congratulations! Okay, third and final question. Are you ready? What is the number that you need to dial in case of an emergency? Is it A, the 112, or B, my birth date? <laughs> Timer. The time's up. So, kids, give me your answer. That's right, in case of an emergency, you need to call the 112. 112. 112. 1. One, two. Congratulations, you did great today. You are fantastic again. Wow, isn't this Jeep just a beauty? Ah, that was a tiring day with the firefighters, but a very fun one, if you know what I mean. And you know what? When I grow up, I really want to be a firefighter myself. If I want to be as strong and muscular as a firefighter, I need to work out. But before that, if you like this video and you want to see more adventures, don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's my tip if you want to be nice and dynamic when you grow old, which is exercise as much as you can. And my favorite way of doing so is dancing. So I hope you're ready for the kiddie dance. little kitty kids, it's me, Kitty, K-I-D-I. And today we're in the Marine Fire Station in Marseille. Whoa! Now, not only do Marine firefighters need to put out fires in the city, but they also need to put out fires in the forests and at sea. And for that, they have so many toys. So, I hope you're ready, because you know what I know. I am, let's go.
Usually the Colossus will be sent on a fire when they suspect that an explosion could occur. So as to not take any risk and not risk a firefighter's life, they will send in the Colossus, who is able to shoot more than 2,000 litres of water a minute. That's a lot of water. Wow! So, who have we here? Well, we have the Colossus, the robot, and its nickname is Marius, because we're in Marseille, so we need a typical southern French name. And here you have Clément and Rémi. Hi, Clément. Hi, Kitty. Hi, Rémi. Hello. So, it has three cameras for the pilot. This one is the thermal camera. It's a camera which is in infrared, which allows the pilot to see which is the hottest point of the fire, which is important information. And here you have a camera to direct the water cannon. That's right, because the water cannon moves independently from the rest of the machine. And this guy right here is the Colossus eye. It allows Clément, who is the pilot, to see what the Colossus is seeing. And it's very important because Clément is controlling the Colossus and he needs to maneuver it around well, the environment properly. And these are caterpillar treads. This allows the robot to go everywhere, including to climb steep slopes. This robot can move up to eight kilometers an hour, which might not seem that impressive, but it's 500 kilos. It's still pretty fast. Now, the Colossus, not only can it fight huge fires, it can also carry up to 500 kilos and of course, transport victims, just like me. So in many ways, the Colossus is a real hero. Isn't that cool? Ah! Help me! Ah! Now, unfortunately, not all situations can be solved bursting in with a 500 kilo robot, just throwing water everywhere. No, you'll need some smaller robots for other missions, more technical missions, like the Nerva, which only weighs six kilos. And this little robot specializes in reconnaissance missions. It is capable of detecting any kind of dangerous substances and it will send the information back to the firefighters so that they know what to wear and what equipment to take in order to intervene in complete safety. However, you can't always intervene on an actual ship because, you know, it's too dangerous. So to train, we have a fake ship on real land just next to the sea. Hello, T. Hello, Kitty. Hello there. Come on, sit over here. Come on, there. Oh, aren't you a beauty? Oh, okay, don't want to scare you. There's one. Come on, smell that. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh, you're a strong one. You're a strong one, aren't you? Go backwards. Go backwards. Can you do a little turn? Oh, yes, you can. Look at it. Wow. How are you so well trained? Oh, well. Hi, Clemo. Hi, Kitty. So it's you again, behind the Nerva. Now, the Nerva is a six kilo robot and it's sent on technically hard missions. This robot is sent on reconnaissance mission. So when you don't know really what you're getting into, you'll send this robot because it has a little camera, but also loads of instruments in order to tell the different firefighters if there's chemical risk, biological risk, or even nuclear risks, so that they can have the right equipment on them when they intervene. Isn't that right? <gasps> oh, yes it is. Oh, yes it is. Whew. Well, that was uh, a very interesting day now, wasn't it? But it's not over yet. That's right, it's now time for the Kitty Quiz. First question. What do you use to control a rope? Time up. Time's up. So, what's your answer? That's right. To control a robot, you need a remote control. Congratulations. Okay, second question. What can a firefighting robot do? Time up. Time's up. So, what's your answer? That's right. A firefighting robot can put out a fire. Congratulations, you got all the right answers to the kitty quiz. You know what that means. That's right, it's time for the kitty dance. So let's go and dance. Ready, set, roll. Ready, set, now. I'm kitty. Yeah, I'm kitty. I'm Jimmy. 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 I
Today, we're in Marseille with the Marine Firefighters to see all they have at disposal to help people in distress in the sea. So I hope you're ready, because you know what? I know. I am. So let's go! When we think of firefighters, we think of fire, but also of the sea. That's right. Sailors go to sea, and so does the Marine Firefighter Department of Marseille. They often have to intervene and carry out rescues on the water, but also underwater. This is where it all starts, in the barracks, where the fire trucks are also located. There's no denying it, firemen have to be in top physical shape to be so efficient at their job. I think I'm going to have to do a bit more sport if I want to become a firefighter too one day. So there you have some diamonds and there you have a linguine. A linguine? A linguine. A linguine. <laughs> yeah, a linguine pasta. Very, very good. <laughs> linguine. <laughs> Can you hear that? Now, when firefighters get a call, they need to get ready quickly and head out to save the people in danger. Let's go! So, here we are in front of the Marine Fire Brigade motorboat. Ooh, it's all red, just like the tracks. This marine firefighter motorboat is 25 meters long. It has three hydro cannons and can carry up to 21 people. But not only that, it has a tender boat. It's a smaller boat that it's used on specific missions, technical missions and rescues. And we're gonna use it today because we're gonna rescue me. That's right, I'm gonna be in the sea and they're gonna come and save me. And you'll get to see all the equipment they use for those type of missions. So I hope you're ready, because you know what? I know, I am. So let's get on board. It's by practicing rescue techniques that firefighters are always ready to intervene. It's important to practice regularly so that you don't lose any time during the real rescue operation. Firefighters have a new workplace, the forest. Have you heard of global warming and droughts? When the weather is very, very hot, dry giant fires can break out in the forest. <gasps> Trees can burn faster than houses and firefighters must work very, very hard to put them out. Fire can be quick or fire can be slow. Did you know that fire can burn four times quicker when it's going uphill? Firefighters pour lots of water on the fire to cool it down. Then they make sure the fire can't spread any further or start again by using lots of different tools. Rain will put the fire out, but until that happens, the firefighters must stay on guard because the soil can still be burning under the ground. You can help firefighters by calling an emergency number if you see a flame burning near trees. Now, when you're at sea, you should always, always have a life jacket on you. It's very important and it can save your life. Now, 
here we are on the Marine Firefighter motorboat. And this boat is capable of putting out fires that are at sea and on the shore. Now, we're on the front deck. And as you can see, there's some very weird looking tubes here. Now, those tubes are hydro cannons. They can shoot up to 6,000 meters of water up to 80 meters away. And there's three of them, two on the front deck and one up there. Hello. Ooh, I want to play with them. Come, I'll show you around. <laughs> in the cockpit. That's right, just like a plane, you will steer a boat from the cockpit. And we're with Captain Roland. Hi, Captain. Hi, Chili. Now, you'd think that to maneuver a boat, you would use this magnificent wooden steering wheel, just like old pirate ships. But no, modern day boats have this little joystick right there that you can use it. Now, I won't play around with it because we're currently at sea and I'm not allowed to, so, you know. Oh, and just so you know, if you ever get on a boat, you'll never say left and right. That's when you're on land. No, when you're on a boat, you have starboard on your right and port on your left. Just so you know. Oh, and you see these big guys, those big joysticks, those are for maneuvering the water cannons, well, hydro cannons, which are just there. in the machine room and in this room there's two pumps two big pumps and these pumps can pump up to 10,000 liters of seawater a minute and they send it directly to the hydro cannons which are just above me on the deck Psst. here we are on the quarter deck what you see here is called a clarinet not for playing music though, it's for connecting the fire hoses. This clarinet is directly connected to the pumps in the hold of the boat. So, so we're going to simulate a rescue. To be precise, I'm going to be thrown in the water and they'll go and rescue me. Yay! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Whoa! Here I am in the water and it's cold. So cold. As you can see, I'm on my back, floating peacefully. You're going to take part in the rescue exercise, which consists of reaching a person in danger and pulling him or her out of the water. Hello? 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 Help me! I'm lost in the water! Please? Firefighters wear special shiny helmets. It helps you tell them apart from police or ambulance workers. Firefighters don't wear helmets to look nice, no, 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 no. The helmet is very important to keep firefighters safe. 
It protects them from things that could hurt them, like heat or falling objects. Ooh. The helmet also has a special mask to help them breathe when there's smoke or chemicals in the air. Firefighters' helmets have changed a lot over time. They've been made from leather, metal and even plastic. The most famous firefighter helmet is called the F1 and it's really high-tech. Firefighters take good care of their helmets and never eat with it on or put them in strange places. If you see a dangerous situation, you can help by calling emergency services. Look around! We're in the Mediterranean. There are lots of boats, windsurfers and divers, for example. And when they have a problem, you have to act quickly. After spotting the person, the divers will jump out of the boat to secure the victim and bring him or her aboard the boat. It's the firefighters, sir. Uh, I was windsurfing and my board was taken away. Okay. You will security. We're very lucky to have such professionals to rescue us. The marine firefighters are great, true heroes. Well, that was a busy day, but it's not over yet. That's right, it's now time for the Kitty Quiz. So I hope you're ready for these three questions. First question. What comes out of a hydro cannon? A. Water or B. Confetti Timer Time's up! So, what's your answer? That's right! Water comes out of the hydro cannons! Yay! Congratulations! Water W A T E R Okay, now for the second question. What do you call the right hand side of a boat? Do you call it A. Starfish or B. Starboard? Timer! Time's up! So, what's your answer? That's right, the right hand side of a boat is called starboard. Congratulations! Starboard. S-T-A-R-B-O-A-R-D Starboard Ok, third question What should you always wear while on a boat? Or at sea, really? Do you A. Wear a fur jacket Or B. A life jacket Timer Time's up! So, what's your answer? That's right! While on a boat or at sea, you should always have a life jacket on you! Congratulations! Life jacket L I F E space J A C K E T Life jacket! Congratulations, you got all the right answers to the kitty quiz. That means it's time for the kitty dance. Let's go. Ready, set, grow. Ready, set, now. I'm kitty. Yeah, I'm kitty. I'm kitty. Set, grow, ready, set.
Sit. <laughs>